So we have House File 3202. Uh, I will recommend that House File 3202 be moved to the State Government Finance Division. Um, it looks like there's an amendment also, uh, an author's amendment. Would you like me to move the amendment, Representative Christensen? Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay. Uh, I will move the DE1 amendment. Is there any discussion to the amendment? Okay. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The bill is in the shape you would like. Uh, Representative Christensen, please uh, present your bill. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Excuse me. <clears throat> I haven't spoken that much today yet. Um, and thank you to members for, um, for supporting, hopefully, um, HF 3202. Um, my bill, as amended, will what it, what we want it to do is to exempt simple hairstyling, washing, dyeing, arranging, and styling hair, and makeup artistry from cosmetology licensing. And as I move forward here, I think you'll understand why um, why it's a good idea. The bill addresses a problem that many special event hair and makeup artists face in Minnesota because of the way the cosmetology board interprets its rules exempting certain beauty services from cosmetology licensing. There are hundreds of special event hair and makeup artists in Minnesota. These are, uh, it's mostly women-owned businesses, and of course the clientele is mostly women, so I think we need to, um, you know, I, I support young entrepreneurs this way for sure, but these are the folks that go into church basements and just help brides and, um, and bridesmaids to um, look their best for the wedding. Um, Artists provide bridal hair and makeup services to brides and wedding parties at wedding venues. They also provide hair and makeup services for commercials, film, theater, and other commercial productions. Bridal hair and makeup is usually their most profitable service. By rule, the Cosmetology Board exempts beauty services for fashion, film, media, photography, and retail makeup counters, so they, don't, they are not governed by the board at all. They are all exempt. Special event hair and makeup artists who work in these areas do not need the cosmetology license. For years, bridal hair and makeup artists believed that they were legally providing their services under the cosmetology board's exemption for beauty services and photography. But the board has made it clear that bridal hair and makeup artists are not exempt and are required to comply with licensing requirements and to obtain a special event permit. These licensing requirements are burdensome, to say the least. Minnesota requires two licenses and a special event permit for them to work. To comply, to comply with these, um, to comply, many of the artists would have to stop working, close their businesses, spend between ten and twenty thousand um, dollars to receive cosmetology training. Minnesota requires fifteen hundred and fifty hours of cosmetology training for simple hairstyling and makeup, or 600 hours for only makeup. Until this month, the board additionally required artists to spend 2,700 hours working in a cosmetology, cosmetology salon, which usually took on an additional two to three years for artists to complete. Finally, the state requires artists to obtain a special event permit and to register every wedding or event where they work at least 40 hours, 48 hours before the event. The cosmetology curriculum is geared toward providing haircuts, color, using chemicals, doing facials, waxing, and nails. Very little time is spent on services that special event hair and makeup artists actually practice. Right now, the constitutionality of the board's different treatment of artists who provide their services for weddings is also being challenged by a group of bridal hair and makeup artists in court. They're additionally challenging the board's application of the cosmetology licensing requirements to bridal hair and makeup artists. This bill will level the playing field for all artists in Minnesota who provide simple hairstyling and makeup. It exempts these services because artists are already safely providing these services in the state without um, the regulation. I ask for your support to help and protect these entrepreneurs and small businesses who make um, such an important contribution to our state. Um, I know in Stillwater, we are um, a wedding venue. The, the town itself, we have many, many weddings, many, um, you know, many 
businesses in our town that um, that will depend on this legislation. So I hope you consider. I think you know I am. Um, I'm not against regulation. I call it um, consumer protection, and I think we need that. But I think there's some overreach here, and I'd like you to support the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Christensen. I do have a number of people to signed up who have signed up to testify, so I might be a little more. Um, strict than I usually am with the time limit. If you could try to keep it to two or three minutes, if it gets to be three minutes or so, I might. Okay, I think I yeah, might I let think people know. The people that I've talked to, it's between a minute or two. Okay, so it should great. Be short. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today in support of HF 3202. My name is Christina Zemer. I am the owner of Christina Zemer Beauty. I've been a small business owner for the last four years and have been doing makeup and hair, hairstyling for the last 12 years. I would like to share how the current laws affect my business and my life, along with the lives of thousands of other artists. I've always known that makeup artistry and a career in beauty is what I wanted to do. I've never seen myself having a different career path. When someone introduced me to the world of freelance and special event makeup, I instantly fell in love and never looked back. I honed my craft over the last 12 years as a special event makeup artist and hairstylist, and now bridal and special event makeup, uh, special event clients are 80% of my business. I specialize in special event hairstyling and makeup. I do not cut, color, chemically alter hair, wax, or apply chemicals to the skin. Bridal hair and makeup is my bread and butter. I spend 40 hours a week building my business. The majority of my clients who book with me are through word of mouth and referrals. I work hard to hold myself to the highest safety standards. I come prepared for every job. I have 60 five-star reviews, 60 plus five-star reviews. My reputation is something I'm incredibly proud of. I've done this unlicensed along with hundreds of others. The cosmetology board has decided that in order for special event, make, a special event hairstylists and makeup artists like myself to continue working, will need to go to cosmetology school and complete thousands of hours of training. We have always thought we were exempt from the license requirements because we provide services for photography, but the board wants us to become licensed cosmetologists or estheticians. I have done countless of photo shoots for fake brides using models that have been featured in blogs and magazines, which is completely legal for me to do. But somehow applying makeup to a bride on her wedding day in the same setting suddenly makes me a criminal. These real brides have been featured along the fake ones inside the same magazine publications. We also need to get a special event permit, which requires us to first become salon managers. I have never worked in a salon and would have to shut down my business in order and start over in order to get this training. I have worked day and night for the last four years to build my business into what it is today, all while raising my two small children. What I love about what I do is I have the uh, ability to be a parent while still running a business. And I'm setting an example for my children who are five and seven, especially my daughter, that you can be a mother and a small business owner and succeed in both. Starting over would cause insurmountable, finan insurmountable financial strain for my family. And it's not something I can afford to do. I'm risking everything to stand before you today and give my testimony. I'm risking my career, my business, and how I pro pro financially provide for my family. If the law is not changed, I will have to shut down my business, and so will over a 1,000 other women across the state. This is urgent and needs to be addressed now for our livelihoods, our families, and the very thing we love to do. My career as a makeup artist and hairstylist is a part of who I am, and I could, I, if I couldn't continue to do my job and provide these services for my clients, I feel as though a piece of me would be missing. I love what I do, and I am so fortunate I get to say that. My hope is my testimony will s help save my business and the businesses of countless women. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story, and I ask you to support HF 3202. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Zemer. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Good morning. All right, um, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify today in support of House File 3202. My name is Amy Reed, and I'm the owner of Amy Marie Artistry, 
I'm an LLC, a registered business with the state of Minnesota. I hold a federal ID number and I carry the proper business insurance needed to run my business. I'm a freelance makeup artist and I love to work. I love doing this for a living and to, I love to make people feel good. This is what I do. I am blessed that this career supports myself and my three children. As they say, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. That's me. Makeup was an unregulated service years ago when I attended Faces Etc of Minnesota, a professional makeup school. I received an entire education dedicated to makeup. I completed my course and hit the ground running. Since, I've gone places and done things I could have never imagined. At the time, I'd spoken with different cosmetology schools inquiring about the makeup training. I received the same response that makeup was only a day or two out of the entire $20,000 program. I knew it didn't make sense for me to learn to cut and color hair, wax, or do nails and pedicures. I never wanted to work in a salon. The consumer demand has kept me and thousands of others busy. While on-site bridal services have boomed, the BCE wants to stake their claim by finding and shutting down businesses like mine. They made an example of other successful artists to scare us into their cosmetology and aesthetics programs. This was done by reinterpreting their own laws to capitalize on our success by cherry picking the bridal industry as their jurisdiction. Makeup artists have been serving brides in Minnesota for over 40 years. This is greed on their part as they are not interested in any of the other makeup facets that I work in. I work for many Minnesota companies such as Polaris, Medtronic, Snap Fitness, MyTalk 107, and several production and photography companies. I prepare CEOs for corporate internal videos, take care of talent for product videos, shoot commercials and billboards for advertisement, uh, headshot days at attorney and accounting firms, work on feature films, senior pictures, runway shows, plus many more. Outside of Minnesota, I have worked for Ford, Honda, and the Super Bowl. Most recently, I was contracted by NBC to prep Joe Biden's hair and makeup for a live TV broadcast. The BCE does not require a license for any of these other services. They are all unregulated. I ask, why can I do the hair and makeup of the former Vice President of the United States of America, but I'm not able to put lipstick on the bride in the state of Minnesota? The BCE isn't interested in any of my corporate affairs or other clients outside of bridal. They are not interested in the Clinique counter at Nordstrom's or the Mary Kay lady outselling her product. They want a stake in the $70 billion wedding industry by putting the restrictive laws and regu regulations on hardworking people like me. I have built an extensive resume and I did that because of me. I have been the one to keep my ongoing accounts with my outstanding craft. My reputation and business is successful without a piece of paper that costs $20,000 4,250 hours logged in a salon, or required hours logged in a salon, on top of all the permit and licensing fees. Thousands of artists are being stripped of our wages, entrepreneurship, and rights. Last year, I worked on 29 weddings. Out of fear, I have removed my bridal work and pricing from my website and social media accounts. Please support House File 3202 to remove the gross overreach by the BCE. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Uh, do we have additional testifiers? Welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to come and speak with you today about the bill HF3202. My name is Debbie Carlson. I am the owner and founder of Faces Etc. of Minnesota, a media makeup school in Minneapolis. I have been a dedicated leader in the beauty industry for over 40 years. I have held every beauty license offered in the state of Minnesota, including cosmetology, manager's license, beauty school manager, salon owner, and instructor. After serving the beauty industry for 40 years, I am disheartened and beyond disappointed. The beauty industry has heavily influenced state law and regulations at the expense of women and small minorities. The rigid requirements to work and maintain a current license are daunting and expensive enough, and the fines imposed for non-compliance and mounting costs for continuing education creates a vicious money-grabbing cycle. In addition to my cosmetology career, I have also been privileged to be a freelance media makeup artist and platform educator for over 40 years. Suffice it to say, long before there was a special event permit in Minnesota, there were freelancers who were working every facet of the production, on or off-site, hired by photographers, event planners, brides, and special appearance for photography or other. I opened Faces Etc. of Minnesota, a licensed post-secondary career school under the Office of Higher Education. My objective was to offer a more affordable and greater makeup education to those pursuing makeup artistry 
as a career, including beauty school students who were disappointed with the lack of makeup education they received in beauty school. The latter is a concerning matter. Faces fills that void. Makeup is not considered a headliner in the beauty industry, like hair, skin, or nails, but taught as a supplemental service, more offered to even out where a shampoo or a rinse has disrupted the client's makeup. Makeup in beauty school is not taught in completion, nor as a legitimate career. My curriculum's focus is on media makeup, camera-ready hairstyling, and business training for both the licensed beauty professional and the freelance artist. Those trains in my school fall under the BCE's definition of unregulated services for photography, fashion, film, and media. In December 2018, the BCE released a flyer stating that beauty services for brides are not unregulated services. Furthermore, the BCE sent cease and desist letters and fined some artists who were out working without their required 1,550-hour cosmetology license, their 2,700-hour manager's license, and their SCP permit. These actions by the BCE has disrupted an entire flourishing bridal and makeup industry in Minnesota. As of 2018, nearly 40,000 licensed beauty professionals in the state of Minnesota. Shockingly of that number, there are only 37 licensed professionals holding the SCP permit that the beauty industry requires for them to operate legally. In essence, 37 beauty professionals can legally work for the 10,000 plus bridal events occurring annually. It's self-evident that this leaves a vast gap in consumer choices. It is also self-evident that most artists in the state have been serving brides illegally for years or decades. That 2018 decision by this D BCE has devastated not only my establishment as a business, as a Minnesota's only licensed makeup school, but it has shattered the careers of nearly 500 of my alumni, along with hundreds of other artists who have been doing bridal photography makeup for 10 plus years. Yeah, the, impact of, of the impact on my licensed makeup school, something that I worked on as the grand finale of my career path, has been completely ravaged by the Board of Cosmetology. It has been catastrophic, um, not only on my dreams, but the dreams of many others who are sitting here today. Our enrollments plummeted as the news started to spread for fear of unsustainable work, retribution by the board, and the possibility that they would eventually be forced into beauty school programs and licensure by the BCE. These fears of financial burdens are not being able to work without a license created a drastic drop in my enrollments. I'm gonna have and, to ask you to, to yeah. wrap it up here. Yes, and a crippling effect to the financial devastation of the school. The steady annual growth has experience has been halted and it has been per per perpetuated by the BCE. My alumni have worked all over the country on many important um, people. I'll skip past that to get down here. The entrepreneurs that are gathered here today in this room share a common dream, and that is that the consumer herself created this need. The consumer wanted on-site special event hair and makeup versus going to the salon. Through social media, influencers, and celebrity culture, it has become both prestigious and popular to hire on-site makeup artists. There are many ways that they can get trained from a school like myself personal training or YouTube videos. The vital point of this whole thing is that the artist's education, their brand, their careers were not designed, developed, or nurtured by the Board of Cosmetology. I can feel your passion, but uh, I think you're gonna need to yes. wrap it up here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I wanna ask you for your support for that bill to exempt makeup, special event hair and makeup artists under that bill, 3202. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> sure, sounds good. <laughs> Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Committee. My name is Jessica Maycoza, and I am here today in support of Bill HF 3202. I've been a professional makeup artist for 14 years, and I am the founder of War Paint International Beauty Agency. When I started my career, I found that I did not need a license in order to be a makeup artist. Additionally, upon researching both the cosmetology and the esthetician programs, I was disappointed to find the lack of um, education that I would receive in makeup artistry. 
With this information in mind, I decided not to go to beauty school and rather teach myself and take master classes to advance my craft. The BCE in 2018 changed their interpretation of what photography means when it comes to hair and makeup. They have cherry picked weddings, one of the most photographed days of someone's life, and have said that weddings do not count as photography. Therefore, make it illegal for me to do my job unless I have a series of licenses. Mind you, all of these licenses do not equip you to do hair and makeup artistry for weddings. In 2013, my husband Sam and I founded Warpaint International Beauty Agency with a vision to touch as many lives as possible. The lives of our clients and the lives of the contractors that we would hire. WPI is a beauty agency here in Minneapolis that contracts makeup artists and hairstylists. We've built our company with key core values, such as safety, talent, and integrity. From the beginning, we have technically tested our contractors to ensure that the people we're hiring give the utmost care to our clients. We also criminally background check them to ensure the same. Safety is taken very seriously at my company. Since its inception, WPI has paid out almost seven figures in income. This income has helped my contractors save for their dream homes, their children's education, pay off debt, and has even sustained them through hardships. If Bill HF3202 doesn't pass, I will have to shut the doors of my company. It's going to have a crippling effect on the contractors that I love to pay. I get really excited when I run payroll, <laughs> even when it's a lot. It would be devastating to lose what I've worked so hard to build. The BCE, we've been running our business successfully for years, and now the BCE is trying to rip away the biggest revenue generator that we have, which is wedding hair and makeup. The fact that I can provide a makeup and hair service to someone who will be in a wedding photo shoot, but not for a bride on her wedding day, is absurd, it's unjust, and clear evidence that the BCE is only after one thing, our money. Whether we provide a service for a photo shoot or a wedding day is the exact same service. In addition to all of this, local businesses like Minnesota Bride and Forever Bride are going to feel the negative effects of wedding beauty providers closing their doors because they, they, um, they expect and they um, rely on the advertisers to advertise on their platform, as well as national um, providers like The Knot. The wedding industry is an ecosystem that reaches far beyond hair and makeup. If one part of that ecosystem ceases to exist, thousands will be affected. In closing, I would like to ask for your support of Bill HF3202 to exempt makeup artists and hairstylists from needing to be licensed. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your testimony. Is there anyone else who would like to testify? Um, okay, oh. uh, we stand for We're questions. I guess. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, sounds good. Um, and you can, there, it's a passionate Wait. group. Um, so Absolutely. thank you for um, listening to their stories. It's an important story. Okay. So, any questions? Actually, there is one more person who would like to testify. Okay. So. Welcome to the committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. For the record, my name is Jim Hurst. I'm here today on behalf of the Minnesota Salon and Spa Professional Association, a trade group in existence since 1927. My remarks will be very brief in consideration of the time uh, restraints that you have for the duration of your hearing today. Uh, real briefly, uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members, our association has deep concerns and reservations of the uh, legislation before you. I wish to commend the author and the committee for adopting the DE1 amendment because that does uh, preclude this deregulation from also extending into eyelash extension services. The purpose of our uh, concern on this is because the, the state policy is anything pertaining to cosmetology uh, is best served by licensing the practice for the health and safety of the people in the state of Minnesota. And that goes back to 1927. The original statute was, was adopted three years after our existence, um, and it specifically uh, included cosme cosmetic preparations used in beautifying the face. Over the years, of course, the statute has changed and modified. 
And when I mentioned the, uh, the issue with uh, 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 eyelash extensions and uh, thanking the author and the committee for removing that from this bill, I think the eyelash extension uh, law serves as a good guide as to how we should approach uh, makeup artistry and simple hairstyling because the same problem occurred four years ago. Eyelash extension individuals came forward and said it's not fair. We have to do either 1,550 hours or 600 hours of, of, uh, pre of instruction just to do our, our individual type of service. We agreed with them and we said, let's set up a specialty license. By the same token, this is appropriate to be applied in these cases as well. Uh, again, the health and safety of the individual, of the consumer, should be concerned. I applaud all of the unlicensed individuals who are here who have said that they do a very good job, and I don't doubt that one bit. However, uh, if we completely deregulate this, there is going to be an uptick in the potential for, uh, for uh, diseases. And by that, I'm talking about things like pink eye, uh, styes, if you have a dirty mascara stick that you use on, on the individual. If you're applying makeup, make sure that the brushes that you use are disinfected in between uh, customers, unless there's single service usage. You need to have some knowledge of the skin and the composure, the, the complex of the skin pertaining to the type of cosmetics that you apply to these people. And again, instruction is helpful in this matter. What we did with, with uh, eyelash extensions was we said in lieu of the instruction that you need for cosmetology or aesthetics, take a 38, uh, excuse me, for starters, if you're already doing it, you can be grandfathered in. Take eight hours of a refresher course, pass a basic test specific to this, and you're good to go. For new people coming into it, you can take a 38-hour training class, pass a test, and be licensed in that regard. By the same token, that serves as a good model for this going forward. Let me conclude, Mr. Chairman, by saying last spring, about this time, we were approached by a representative of the makeup artist. And when they shared this problem, we agreed with them that it's onerous to have to go through all this education if you just want to do this type of service. We suggested something along the lines of eyelash extension legislation. They agreed. We started working on such legislation over the interim. But as was commented earlier, since uh, a lawsuit has been filed, and so we feel it's appropriate to not consider legislation in regards to this while the court is deciding this factor. By the same token, that should be applied in this case as well. However, as this bill moves forward, I strongly encourage the author and the proponents to take a look at this reasonable alternative to uh, as, uh, as an alternative to complete deregulation of these services. And with that, I'll conclude my remarks and certainly welcome any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hurst. Let me see if there's anyone else who would like to testify. Um, sure, if you could please come forward. Uh, well, I, can, I, can call, I have another member on the list also. Um, I can call him back if you have a question specific for Mr. Hurst. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to testify who wants to. Um, please come forward. Um, Thank you, sir. Uh, identify yourself for the tape and proceed yes, with your testimony. My name is uh, Nino Altabelli. I am vice president of Rocco Altabelli Hair Salons. We have six salons and 150 employees. I am in favor of this bill, in favor of this uh, um, this file at uh, 3202. Um, just some of the things uh, I wanted to talk about. I'm not here uh, prepared, really. But uh, one of the things was the eyelash extensions that uh, we were talking about and how this affects uh, my industry. I also work within a school right now helping out a beauty school um, maintain licensure and uh, work with them for their education and getting them salon ready in the industry. Right at this moment, we do have students that are being denied their licensure 
for the, from the Cosmetology Association because they did not complete their lash extension quotas at the school and did not participate in the PST examinations uh, that the state has provided as their test um, for um, these services. Um, when I got started into this last year, I was working with the makeup uh, people and, and uh, my father and myself, we travel around the world. We've been behind the scenes at all of these uh, um, bridal events. But what's really kind of hurting me right now is two of the students that are currently just graduated, just spent $15,000, just spent 1,550 hours just spent the $200 for their licensing fees. Now they're being told to go back to school and complete five lash extensions and take the whole PST test over. Not just one segment, the whole thing, 14 different sections of the test. It is absolutely absurd. So I hope you support this bill. Thank you very much for hearing me. Thank you. Appreciate your brevity there. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on this bill? Welcome to the committee. If you could please step forward. I am, we are past our regular committee time, so I am going to be enforcing probably a two minute limit at this point. Welcome to the morning. committee. Please identify yourself and proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. My name is Melanie Rivers, and I'm a freelance artist. I've been an artist, um, own my own business for about eight years, and was not expected to speak today, so I'll make this very, very quick. Um, a couple things that I wanted to clarify. It's not just women that are affected. There are a few men in the audience today that are artists as well. There are many um, male-run businesses that we work with, vendors that we work with that are also affected and not just specific artists, also other professionals in the industry. It's not just weddings, that's not just special events. Anything that, revol that involves like a gala or if your sister hires me to do a makeup lesson for her at my studio, I'm technically working illegally. Because I love education, that's something that's very important to me and that's something that um, has recently come to my attention that technically I'm working illegally. If I do a wedding for free, I'm not illegally working. But if I choose to charge for that wedding, I'm now illegally working. So it's not just our ability to do it, it's whether or not we charge for those special events. And that's the thing is if, we're, if safety is concerned here for our consumers, then it should be concerned whether or not we are working for free or for media, it doesn't matter whether or not because the services that we are providing are for this are the same. So if safety is of a concern, then that's something that should be regulated as well. And so it doesn't make sense to have some, that inconsistency across the board. Um, also, one more thing too that I wanted to, um, hi, I'm sorry, I'm totally drawing a blank right now. Um, that this is something that doesn't really make sense to us because a licensed professional also can disregard safety and, and um, sanitation concerns. I work with several licensed professionals who are not sanitary by any means and who pose several risks to consumers. And the rest of us have established businesses based on our reputation. So for our reputations, we do maintain safety concerns. So I think sometimes licensing can actually take away some of that responsibility that the artist feels that they have towards the consumer because they think, oh, it's not a big deal. I work for a salon. They carry all the insurance. We carry our own insurance. And we do take responsibility for that. And again, having a license doesn't guarantee safety for consumers. So I just wanted yeah. to kind of add a few of those details. So thank you. I appreciate um, your time today. Thank you, Ms. Rivers. Is there anyone else who would like to testify on this bill? OK, seeing none, we'll go to member discussion. Representative Mason, you were first. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. A uh, couple of questions. One is on the uh, amendment, that section 5. Now, it says that that person performs personal services for the cosmetic care of the skin, but it doesn't include makeup services. So can you tell me the difference between cosmetic care and not using makeup? 
uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. I'd like to introduce um, Megan, who is here, and she can help answer the question. Sure. Thanks Please much. identify yourself and proceed with your response. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Megan Forbes. I'm from the Institute for Justice. Um, the cosmetic care of skin is a very broad definition. Um, the definition of cosmetology and aesthetics in Minnesota is incredibly broad. It can capture a lot of things, but Minnesota has carved out certain things that are safe that don't quite fall within this broad definition. An example would be hair braiding has been carved out from hairstyling. Um, same thing here with makeup. Um, makeup would be carved out from the cosmetic care of the skin. Thank you. Representative Mason. That didn't exactly answer my question. What is the difference? What do you use for cosmetic care if it's not makeup? Ms. Forbes. Representative Mason, cosmetic care is in cosmetology school is more associated with facials, um, hair removal. It's more, it's more of the actual care of the skin. Um, not much time in cosmetology school is focused on makeup. It's more on actually caring for, for the skin. Okay. Representative Mason. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Representative West. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative. Uh, okay, I don't know who can answer this question for me, but uh, as a single guy, I really don't understand makeup or anything like that. Uh, but it sounds like people have been doing this unlicensed for a long time. Is there like an epidemic of people being harmed? Are people being maimed by makeup? Is there any statistics <laughs> behind this? Uh, Ms. Forbes, you look like you're ready to answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Nolan, we do not have any evidence of harm. Um, nothing has been brought to our attention um, up until this point, and you're exactly correct. It, bridal hair and makeup artists and, and freelance hair and makeup artists have been working without licenses in the state for years and years, and this hasn't been an issue until just the last two years. Representative West? Sounds okay. like a good bill. Okay. Uh, Representative Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess I didn't know this brand of professionalism existed. Uh, maybe I should, but I didn't. Um, you're use <coughs> it still seems that you are using chemicals to do the job that you're doing. And I'm, and I guess my guess is if I'm going to have somebody work on my skin at all, that they have some background on the materials that you're using. So you're saying all of this is being done. So if they're in the salon, they've gone through all of this stuff, but it's probably it sounds like it's limited training. And then the group that you're representing now, they're using it, and then basically they don't have any training. They just kind of seem to be doing this on their own, except the, the, the one woman did have a, have a school. Okay. Uh, Rep. Ms. Forbes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Mason, many of these artists are self-trained. Many have attended FACES, et cetera, as media makeup school and have far more training than licensed cosmetologists in this area. There are various ways that people come to this point. And makeup is something that most women use every day. Um, it's something that that's, I think most of us recognize is, is pretty safe. Um, but most of the people who have been doing this for years and years have been doing so through through their own self-training and through attending, or seeking out additional training training um, by their own volition. Representative Mason. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no additional discussion, uh, any closing remarks, Representative Christensen? No, I'd just like to thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, members, for listening um, to these passionate folks. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Uh, with that, I will renew my motion that House File 3202, as amended, be recommended to pass to the State Government Finance Division. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Representative Christensen. Aye.